Thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity sh to share some of our views on uh, well, on trucks and the long-term future that we think um, trucks well should be uh, should be having. Um, what I'll try to do in this presentation is first. Um, well, look at the current situation and uh, try to explain why it is important that we also consider electrification for trucks. And then I'll try to look at um, whether electrification is possible at all and if we think about electri electrification, um, which possible options um, we think um, are in store. Um, let's start with you know, some, some basic facts. I mean, as you all know, um, road transport is one of the bigger emitters, uh, one of the bigger contributors to um, CO2 emissions and well, one of the special things about road transport emissions is that they have been increasing over the past uh, couple of decades and that if we are to believe the projections they will continue increasing unless we, unless we do something about it. Um, this is particularly true for road freight um, for two reasons. First of all because everybody expects um, well, road freight to continue growing um, nobody expects uh, there to be significantly less trucks on the roads in, uh, in the next 10 years. And that is, to a certain extent, linked to the fact um, that modal shift policies, which um, many national governments and um, well, the EU as well have, have been proclaiming for the past 10 years, have not been incredibly uh, successful. Um, if you look at the, the share of, of rail freight, um, the overall share of rail freight in freight, it's not, it's not increasing, it's actually decreasing. Um, so that means that, well, without policy action, even if, even if vehicles improve, and I, 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 I do believe the manufacturers when they tell us that they are working on improving the vehicles, um, but even if they get a bit more efficient every year, we will need a lot more if we want to offset the, um, well, the growth in road freight transport. Um, now, this is this AEA Ricardo study was done for the Commission in, uh, in 2011 um, as a preparation for their uh, truck strategy, which, well, is, now it's not entirely clear whether they're going to pursue that truck strategy, but um, what it said is that in a business as usual scenario, um, we will have an increase of emissions of, of about 15% by 2030. If we want to stabilize emissions by 2030, we will need vehicle emission cuts of about 20%. And 20% is a lot in the, for, you know, for a car, 20% is not that much, but for, for the truck, 20% is a lot. Now, there are a number of things that we can do, so that's the good news. The good news is that we can, you know, we could look at aerodynamic uh, trailers, aerodynamic devices. This is being dealt with at EU level now, it's being allowed, so we'll probably see some of these devices on the road in the next couple of years. Um, low resistance tires, that's something else that can be, you know, that, that has a lot of benefits. There's also other things that you can do. You can improve the aerodynamic design of the cab, that you would need a bit more space for that, but the EU Commission has announced that it is willing to give manufacturers extra space um, to redesign their cabs. Um, there's also a whole number of engine improvements that you can think of, um, and hybridization, of course. But the thing is, if you take all these, all these individual measures together, you will get to about 30%, you know, some, some will say a bit more, some will say a bit less. But the thing is that, as Pete showed in the introduction, is that 30% is not enough. You will probably need 60%, 70%. Now, and well, there's just no way that we're going to get there with conventional technology. And that is the reason why we should be looking at electrification as well. Um, voila. So what about electrifying trucks? I mean, I think it's probably useful to first look at hybrid hybridization. I think um, hybrids for cars, uh, but definitely for trucks, um, are the, the link between the conventional fleet and, um, and the fleet of the future. Hybridization of trucks is a realistic option. It's something that manufacturers are looking at currently. Um, it's something which is, which is feasible for urban trucks, um, because urban trucks obviously have a, a, a duty cycle, which is, which is well suited for, hybrid, uh, for hybrids. Um, a lot of start-stop, a lot of idling, uh, they don't. They don't need a huge battery because they don't don't have a huge range. Um, but it's and, and that's a bit counterintuitive. It also works for long haul. Um, the potential for hybridization hybridization in long haul is smaller because um, obviously if you do a lot, you know, if you're driving in a, on a German flat highway, 600 kilometers, 90 per hour, then a hybrid engine is not going to be very useful. But if you do, if you if your track is a bit more hilly, then a hybrid engine can actually help you saving saving a lot of energy energy which you can use. Um, which you can then save. And given the fact that these long-haul trucks have such immense mileages, it 
can actually become cost effective. So we've been talking to a number of, of manufacturers um, over the past year and what they are telling us and also what, what experts say and what consultants say is that hybridization for trucks is a realistic option in the next 10 years. Not next year but in 10 years we might, we might see a lot more electrification there. So full, full electrification of, of, of trucks, um, that might be possible for the urban, uh, for the urban fleet. Um, of course that is to a very large extent dependent on what happens to battery technology. Uh, I think I mean, the, the problems that you have with cars, um, how good is the battery, how reliable is the battery, uh, what about recharging, these problems also exist for trucks. Um, and actually they're a lot bigger because obviously, obviously these trucks are a lot bigger. Um, Battery electric long haul trucks. I think we can we can dismiss that idea. Um, maybe in the future it will be possible to have you know to drive 500 kilometers with a 40 ton truck, um, but you probably will not be carrying a lot of goods. You will be carrying mostly batteries. So that's not that's not very effective. So. And that is, of course, also the reason why most people say uh, electrification of trucks. Ooh, no, that's not possible. Now, the way forward is, of course. Well, of course, the way forward might be to try to get rid of, of, the, uh, of the battery. And over the past couple of years, uh, in a number of countries, they have been conducting research projects, uh, pilots, um, looking at trucks with hybrid engines that do not rely completely on the battery, but that to a large extent rely on energy which they get from well, from the road infrastructure. And um, I'll try to explain it uh, by using the example of the Siemens E-Highway. I'm not saying it's the best um, idea that there is, but it's just, um, it's, it's very visual. The way it works is, is it's like, like a trolley bus. Um, you have a hybrid, you have a hybrid engine. Um, when the truck drives on the highway, it's, um, well, it's driving fully electrically. Um, so no emissions. When it goes off the highway, it can continue on its diesel engine. So you don't have the, I mean, you have the, to a certain extent, and it's probably not a good thing for me to say as an NGO guy, but you have the good thing uh, of, 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 of railway. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have emissions, but you also have the good thing of a, of a truck. You have the flexibility. You can go off the track, because that's obviously a problem with a, with a train. Um, there are other options as well. Um, induction, um, conduction, and I think that's, that's what... Um, uh, my colleague from Renault referred to it as the, the idea of a slide-in system. It's something that Volvo is working on as well. Um, is this, I mean, is this feasible? Um, is it immediately feasible? But probably not. It would require a, a huge overhaul of our infrastructure. Um, but it might be, it might well be feasible in the long run, and it might be necessary. And everything, of, of course, depends on your starting point. If you believe that climate change is a real problem which we need to tackle, then this is definitely something we need to look at. It's not something that we can decide now whether it's, you know, it's the winning solution, but it's something that we, we need to look at. Um, in terms of cost, is it going to be extremely costly? Um, in Germany they did, a, so they did a pilot phase with Siemens and they um, estimated that if they would, like would want to electrify around 6,000 kilometers of German highways, so that's the A1 till the A9 in Germany, that would uh, cost about 14 billion. Now 14 billion is a lot of money. Um, but it all depends on, on well, how you, who spends the money and who pays. Um, if it's all the public purse who pays, then of course it's, it's maybe not affordable. If you let the holders pay for the electricity as well as the use of the infrastructure, it might become a lot more affordable. You can work with concessions, etc. Um, so let me go, let me go to the conclusions. Um, it is absolutely necessary to look beyond what is possible with you know with the conventional technologies because the conventional technologies are not going to get us there they're not they're not sufficient i think that we all agree about that so it might be it might be that we need to look at bio biomethane although it's not entirely sure that we will have enough sustainably produced biomethane but you know and natural gas etc we need to look at a lot of different options but if we really want to completely decarbonize the road transport sector, we will also need to look at, it, at uh, electrification and uh, that's where these uh, e-highway uh, IDs come in. And I think the, the key message to policymakers at this point in time is that we need to do, we need to conduct a lot more tests, we need to, uh, we, we probably need to um, to build a couple of tracks in, in Germany, in Bel for example, between Antwerp and, and Rotterdam, test it, try it, um, see how it works financially, see what the different ownership models are, and then we can take it from there in a couple of years. But the thing is, this is a long-term solution, but it will not happen, you know, it will not just happen. It will require some policy action to, well, to get kick-started. Kick 
Um, so I think that would be my key message then. Thank you.